Tony's here, hear the yell, back to school, ring the bell. Hi, my name is Ron Reese, and this video essentially is just going to show you how to make this slide here. As I was doing a lot of teacher observations, I, I noticed some really great stuff, but I also noticed that uh, a lot of people were kind of struggling with the smart board. So what I wanted to do is I kind of wanted to pay back for all the great stuff that I saw in other people's classes. And I thought this would benefit everyone. What this slide is, is that in addition to having a nice background, it allows you essentially to expand your your smart board. So if I were to write something on it, like say this, some thing, a lot of times I saw people who were, for example, you may be vertically challenged, you'd be struggling just to write up here. Others I saw were kind of squatting down to write stuff down here, which I, I guess is okay if you like that stuff, but if you have bad knees it's not a, it's not a fun day. So what this does is that you can write something on here and then you can just simply slide it up and then write more. And by the way, it's not gone forever when you do that because you can just simply slide it back down. I can tell that we are gonna be friends. Here's a blank page. Let's um let's get a picture for this. This is National Geographic. This is where I get a lot of my pictures. What we're going to do is we're going to copy this image by right-clicking and then selecting Copy Image. Then when you go over to Active Inspire, if you right-click again and paste it, it'll show the image right there. Now, I for one would prefer to fill up the entire space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of drag this over, select it, and then expand it like so. So that fills up the entire space. Now unfortunately the way it is right now I can kind of move this around and I don't want to so what we're going to do is we're going to freeze this in place and we can freeze this in place in one of two ways. You can just simply tell it to lock it in place but the better way to do it would be to have this set as a background. So you're going to need to access your browsers. Click view if you don't have access to them and click on browsers. Mine pop out on the right hand side here and you'll notice that it has all the various properties and such for the page. This just shows your pages, this first one. This second one shows all your different uh, pictures and such. This third one is the one that I'm interested in. This is for objects. This shows all the different layers. It has top layer, middle layer, bottom layer, and then background layer. Whenever you write with the pen, all that stuff goes in the top layer anything that you copy and paste goes to the middle layer which is what you're seeing here and then there's the bottom layer you can drag this down to the bottom layer and that would be fine anything you copy or paste will be on top of this picture but you can still move the picture so instead of doing that let's drag this over let's drag this image down to the background layer and if you do that it's locked in place whoops let's try again if you move this down to the background, there we go. It's locked in place. Now, to turn our attention to the rectangle here, go ahead and click Shapes. And select Rectangle. The, these colors here are just for the outline. These colors are for the inside. I'm going to select white for the inside and then red for the outline. So all we're getting here is just a big rectangle like this. Okay, now let's do this so that we can just simply restrict the movement of this. I mean, we can move this up, down, left, right, no problem. But what we want to do is just simply restrict this so that we can't move it side to side. So go over to your browsers again, and this time pan over to where it says Properties. If you select this, it'll show all the properties for the page. But if you click on the rectangle, it'll show you the properties for the rectangle. So this shows you that the outline color is yellow and the fill is a solid white. You can change all that stuff in here if you like. <clears throat> but if you pan down to where it says restrictors, it will show you all the different restrictions that you can place on this. 
The one we're going to choose right here is Can Move. Right now it can move freely. If you click on this and tell it to only move vertically, that'll prevent you from moving it to side to side and only move it up and down. Now let's make this thing bigger. We can just simply move this down and then do this. Or you might notice that over here in the corner there's a thing that says best fit. That's your zoom level. I'm going to zoom out to 50% so that way you can kind of see the whole universe of this. There's a part that shows and there's a part that doesn't show. If you move this down and then expand it vertically you can make this really long. So that way if I just simply move this down and see I'm moving side to side it doesn't alter it. Then go back to best fit. I've made it really really long now. Unfortunately at, the, at this point if I write something anything right now it'll unfortunately just be another thing that's a part of the layer. So like if I were to move this rectangle up it's not going to drag it with it which is what we want to do. So here's what we do. Select the box again and then again move over to your properties and this time pan down to where it says container. If you click open this menu for container it says can contain. Right now it says it can't contain anything. It says nothing. If you click this, tell it that it can click that it can contain anything. That allows you to set it up as a chalkboard. So now you can write any stuff you want on it and it just moves up along with it. You have to make sure it's within the rectangle though. If you have it on the side like this, it's not going to break it up. It just won't drag it at all until you actually move it to here. Then it'll drag it. You can do this with some of your images as well that you've saved. For example, I saved here a graph. If I drag that on there, it'll go with it. A word note about text. If you type in some stuff for text, like for example, I'm going to type in the word test. It will not move with the container until you move the text also first. Only then does it signal, only then does it know to do that. I use this for my agenda. For example, this is the agenda for Tuesday. It has what's going to happen in the class, announcements, thought for the day. I can drag this up when I get to Wednesday and then drag this up some more when I get to Thursday. I also keep a list of the assignments here on the side so if someone asks, oh my gosh I was absent and I didn't check online, what were they? I can just drag it over and say here. I don't normally put that in with this container, I just have it off to the side so that way it's available for me at all times. I also do this for some of my lesson presentations. I have this organized in Cornell Notes style, so I'll have certain pointers or characteristics on this side. And then on the right hand side, for whatever little fancy stuff that I'll do, I can just simply pan up and down. Anything that I write on here, like for example, on this one, if I write the solution, then after I write the solution, if I decide, you know, that's it, I'm done with that one, let's move on. I can just simply take this thing and drag up and the writing will go with it. I can tell that, we are gonna be friends. that does it for this. I, I hope that works for you. Friends.